Australia's future is in China's hands. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, let's look at this article from CNBC discussing China prepares for a big annual meeting to chart a growth strategy. Now why am I saying our future here in Australia is in China's hands? Because in some way it is. During the GFC, the Chinese stimulus program, well, provided insane demand for a lot of our natural resources. Now, I will bring up a website, which I show many times, but which regulars are familiar with, but those new to the channel may not be. This is the Observatory of Economic Complexity. And once it loads up, you can see how many of our exports are heading to China, 39.1%. If we click on this, it should show you, there you go. Iron ore, petroleum, gas. These are just the, the physical exports, let alone property investment, let alone international tourism, which, it's, which itself is a $60 billion sector as well. And then you've got university education, $10 billion a year. So, yeah, guys, we are heavily reliant on the Chinese economy. So if they start doing another stimulus package, which would be similar to what they did back in the day, you know when Kevin Rudd claimed he saved Australia by handing out funny money? <laughs> Remember when that seemed like a lot? The debt that Labor was running up then? <laughs> Nothing anymore. Well, it could have an impact on us. It could have an impact for our natural resources, which can flow through to the country. Now, I will bring up Google Earth. And what we will have a look at here is I will jump over here once it loads up is well there are two resources that we export significantly to China and you can see you can see hang on iron ore and coal are well two decent sized ones coal is nearly 10 billion nearly equal to international tourism iron ore is 55 billion petroleum gas is 11 billion too now if we look at this map of Australia and if we turn on coal coal here these are the active coal mines and if we turn on iron ore come on iron ore where are you i'll find it up here you can see the portions of the country wa queensland new south wales which are well reliant to some extent on these exports so you can see here you know which states you know want to keep that export flowing makes you wonder why all these people this is why people say Australians have such a huge carbon footprint because the hippies want us all to feel guilty about sending the this natural resource overseas it, it doesn't make any sense at all don't fall for it it's just all rubbish so let's look at this the Chinese government is set to kick off an annual parliamentary meeting this week for approving national priorities for 2021 the gathering of delegates known as the two sessions has overse overseen such changes as president uh, jing jiping's abolition of term limits in 2018 and the proposal for a new security law for hong kong last year the otherwise generally symbolic meeting takes place on particular significance this year as it marks the beginning of china's five-year development plan the 14th 14th such in the country's history and the 100th anniversary of the ruling communist party I was asking other videos if people are aware of the Great Leap Forward or of all, you know, the one child policy and all of the human rights atrocities that the CCP occurred in the past. How many people do you think young people are even aware of Tiananmen Square? What happened there? You know, because this would be like if, if uh, you know, Germany won World War II, uh, in, in, at least in Europe, and you'd be conducting political and trade relations with that country there. And then found out all of the atrocities they committed. Yeah. Same type of thing, guys. Authorities are expected to lay out details on topics ranging from employment targets to management of the semi-autonomous region of Hong Kong. Some commenters, some comments will come as Beijing seeks to show progress on development promises made to the country's 1.4 billion people and build up China's competitiveness in a world shocked by the pandemic and growing weary of Asia's giant, of the Asian giant's rise. So no specific GDP target expected. The two sessions parliamentary meeting is slated to begin Thursday with the opening of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference and Advisory Body, 
The National People's Congress Legislature is scheduled to kick off its annual gathering on Friday. That's usually when the government releases its economic work report, a document laying out GDP, employment, inflation, and other growth goals. Most economists do not expect authorities will realize a GDP target this year after making a rare decision not to do so at last year's parliamentary meeting, which was delayed by about two months due to the pandemic. Li Gang Lu, managing director and chief China economist at City Research, said in a note that if the report lays out a GDP target directly or indirectly, the figure could top 7%. That's according to growth goals announced by different Chinese provinces and commitment and a commitment to double GDP from its level in 2010, Lu said. On monetary policy, although authorities have emphasized they will not abruptly reverse stimulus policies, we expect China's monetary policy conditions will visibly tighten this year, he added. China's economy grew 2.3% last year, despite the shock of the pandemic, as authorities rushed to control the domestic spread of the virus and support businesses with tax cuts and cheap loans. The GDP growth followed extension of 6% in 2019, according to official figures. On employment, economists generally anticipate China will aim to create more than 10 million new urban jobs this year, up from 9 million last year, a plan for the next five years. The parliamentary meeting will also share details on, on and approve China's 14th five-year plan. The development strategy for the world's second largest economy comes as it has reached historic trade agreements with the Asia, with Asia Pacific neighbors, while facing greater pressure from a U.S. that increasingly considers China a competitor. The plan's emphasis on boosting domestic demand, supply chain upgrading, technology self-sufficiency, and further opening up domestic markets are the main tools to hedge, hedge against external uncertainties. Bruce Pang, head of macro and strategy research at China Renaissance, said in a report. In addition to specifics on how China might address national security issues on technology and energy, authorities are expected to lay out plans for defense spending in 2021. Details on how Beijing plans to strengthen control of Hong Kong could also emerge from this year's parliamentary session. Late last month, Zhou Banong, director of Hong Kong Macro Affairs Office of the State Council and vice chairman of the, People's, of the China's People's Political Conservative Conference, the political advisory body meeting during two sessions, released a speech on how Hong Kong's electoral system should be changed so that only central government supporters would oversee the semi-autonomous region. The parliamentary meeting is expected to last around 10 days and include press conferences with Foreign Minister Wang Zi and Premier Li Wenggang. So there we have it, everyone. We'll have to see what the next five-year plan for China has and if they you know, aim for that 7% GDP growth, because that's going to have an impact on our economy. That's going to have an impact on our stock market, and that's going to have an impact on the Australian dollar. Another question is, do we want that to be the case? As always, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.